All right, recording on video. Good. All right, here we go. Of course not. You motherfucker. <laughs> Damn technology. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you got a PC, this wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking take a piss for you, dude. <laughs> Alright, so we'll restart this. You just totally stepped all over no, that. We, we, need, we need to keep that. <laughs> that stuck to the tape. <laughs> I am still recording, actually, so it's perfect. <laughs> That's the stuff I live for. <laughs> All right, <laughs> round two, <laughs> go. Welcome to Between Two Wheels Podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin. Stop with the premieres bird and uncle i eat snowflakes for breakfast ken this episode is being sponsored by get lowered cycles your home for harley parts accessories and all the gear you could possibly need for your bike today we are having an intimate sit down with the infamous shade tree surgeon <laughs> <laughs> oh an right, intimate i'm, I'm sit back down. <laughs> yeah he's back perfect oh, timing perfect timing <laughs> what's up man Hey, how's it? So are we live now? <laughs> we're, we're, we're live. Yeah, we, we've right, been, we've cool. been live when you yeah. said you had to go take a piss. All right, all right. And we don't well, edit our uh, shows anymore. It won't be the last time that happens. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so how's it going, guys? Man, I've been like I've been waiting to do this. I've been super excited to finally get on this thing. Our schedules have just been so so conflicting. Yeah, life life is stupid because yeah. we're daytime people and you're nighttime people, so it's hard to line up. I trust me, dude. It happens all the time. <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing night shift for fourteen years now, so oh, shit. It's, <laughs> it's uh it takes a toll. So do you do you you usually know what the sun looks like, right? I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I wake up early. Like I I'm a I wake up. If I hadn't woke up to do this, I would have still woken up around like ten thirty or something like that. Because I I wake up, I work on videos, and then once I work on videos till it's time to go into the bar, and then I go into the bar. <coughs> cool. like I don't uh-huh. sleep all day. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's just what you want. It, it is. I used to when I was young. When I was in my early twenties, I slept all day. You know, I'd go out. You could because you go out, you drink a lot more. You you work till three o'clock in the morning, and then you drink till seven o'clock in the morning. Oof. And you sleep all day. So the hardest thing to do is make yourself go right to bed after work. Yep. Yeah. Yep. When I was a but bouncer at a nightclub, you have, same issue. you have to. Yeah. Same, same when I was a bouncer. I, you know, get off two, go home, and I'm like, okay, it's my evening now. Yeah. Yep. Dinner, <laughs> dinner and shows and yeah. whatever. Yeah. All right. So, Shade Tree, we like to start this intimate conversation with you uh, with some get-to-know-you questions. So, <laughs> yeah, you want to get you want to get to know me. Oh, God. Yeah, there, there it is. is. There it is. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about your riding history. So, like, how long have you been riding? First bike, all that good stuff. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I got my first bike when I was like I was like eighteen or nineteen. Um, so at this point, I've been riding for almost eighteen years. Uh. My first bike was a total shitter. <laughs> it was an 89 GSXR 750. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, that I bought for $400. And it was one of those bikes that, you know, no fairing. Total, you know what? You don't see a lot of vintage sport bikes is because they're all just fucking wrecked. They're yep, all yeah. busted up, you know. The Craigslist special. But, yeah, you see old, you see an old '80s GSXR. You're like, wow, the, what a survivor! <laughs> these things were just put through the freaking ringer. They were never very expensive bikes, even back then. You know, and they're so the combination of not very expensive and very fast makes for is just incredibly deadly. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought it for four hundred bucks. I didn't know how to ride when I bought it. I'd never ridden a motorcycle. Um, so I bought it and I figured I learned, I literally learned how to ride a motorcycle on the way home from the guy's house. I bought it. <laughs> that, 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 
that sounds kind of <laughs> like me. And then, I, and then I wrecked it and decided I, I, I should probably learn how to actually do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hunt. I, I did a lot of hunting, so I was so we had quads, so I knew mm-hmm. how to ship. Yeah. Oh, no, that's good. So I, I knew how to work a, a hand clutch. I knew how to shift. Um, it was just everything else. I, and I so I'm pretty turn. sure it was one of those things that you, those deals that you only do when you're a teenager, like the guy lived in a trailer and it, it was the bike came with a tag and that didn't belong to it. And there was no <laughs> title and he literally was going like, yeah, well, you know, you got to like, you just like scrape somebody else's registration off and stick it on there. And the cops probably won't mess with you. And <laughs> it, was, I, it was, I mean, that's what it was, but you know, oh, God. teenager, man, that's, that's. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crap I mean, you do, you know. Yeah, right? so, it works. So <laughs> now, yeah. on that point, you're in Florida now. Have you always been in Florida? Born and raised Central Florida cracker, my man. All right, oh, man. Hey, there it is. So he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, hey, man, that's what it's, yeah. you come down here. This is cracker country in Florida, man. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody's ashamed of that. Yeah, Florida's <laughs> a, a next level white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what are you writing today? Um, today I mostly ride my Ducati. Um, I, yes, I put my pinky out when I said that, but <laughs> that's, uh, I mostly, I mostly ride my Ducati. That's my, um, everyday, everyday shitter that I ride. And I ride the rocket three on the weekends. Yeah. The rocket. It's my dirt bike. Up the weekends. <laughs> so everybody on the videos all, all, almost exclusively sees the rocket three, but I don't ride that bike every day. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, loud it's uncomfortable it handles no. like shit it just no. it, it literally will set your pants on fire <laughs> um, and so it's not i rode it every day for years but the ducati is a much more pleasurable bike to ride every day the dad bike for the win right absolutely it is <laughs> I, I tell mean, people no one wants a dad bike until they ride one hell yeah <laughs> no dude i call it it's i call it the fag bagger, <laughs> the fag bagger. <laughs> <laughs> it's just great. it's what it is it's a euro it's a euro bagger man and it's <laughs> super comfortable and it's smooth and it's incredibly fast yeah on top of it all and it handles very well and i don't know it's just a great it's just a great motorcycle no i totally agree that it is not cool Nobody likes me. <laughs> other dudes. Yes. Other other Ducati <laughs> <That's>, enthusiasts. <laughs> that dude likes it. Likes it. Like girls look at it. They're like, oh, why does it have bags? This is as far as a smart bike. I don't get it. You know. Is that like and fast? Guys, <laughs> and guys are like, oh, this is, is that the Testostrata too? Uh, I've heard about that one. And like, okay, fucking put your boner away, dipshit. Like, <laughs> So uh, you mentioned that uh, people saying the Rocket Three on the channel. So when when did you start to, or when did you decide to start your YouTube channel? Um, um, when I first started YouTube, that was about five years ago now. Um, and I remember I saw one dude. I didn't have a computer. Like I was just very much like a. I didn't own a computer. Very like technologically retarded. Um, so I remember I watched, I had like got on YouTube for something. I really didn't know what YouTube was. Like I had created an account when YouTube first came out like years ago, um, on a friend's computer and, and been like, then never did anything with it. And then I like, I looked up a video cause I was watching it on my Xbox. I was like, Oh, I got YouTube on here. I was, I'm going to look up like a video on a motorcycle. I was like, Oh man, there's a bunch of videos on motorcycles. It's crazy. <laughs> And then there was this one dude um, called Old Man Triple, and I, I saw him, and he was talking on his motorcycle, and he was being funny. Like, he was making jokes, and I was like, why hasn't anybody else thought of this? What a great idea. I was like, I'm going to do that. I thought he was the only guy. I was like, this is the only guy. <laughs> <laughs> Little I was did like, you know. <laughs> I, was like, that, I was like, that's cool. I'll, I'll fucking, I'll try that. And then, of course, I found out that um, you t- I didn't even know there was such a thing as a channel. You know, I was like, oh, well, yeah, there's a channel. And then I found out there's like this whole community of people who create videos. <clears throat> and like so many people 
you know, there's a reason for it, you know, whether it's I didn't get enough hugs as a child or <laughs> I need mean, a lot of validation and every comment on my video is a tiny virtual hug that I never got from my father. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever, whatever those, whatever those reasons are, I, I, was attra- I was attracted to the idea of making videos and showing them to the world. Like that was a very attractive concept to me. So, um, I got a go, a GoPro, a hero three white. And then I had to buy a computer cause I didn't have, a, I didn't own a computer. Yeah, they do go hand in hand. <laughs> and I so I bought a computer, and I learned how to edit videos like on YouTube tutorials, and then that's that's how I started making YouTube videos. Cool, right on. <clears throat> All right, so let's let's jump into some of the the personal stuff. Sure, get as personal <laughs> as you want, man. All right, so so let's start. Where did you get uh, the name Shade Tree Surgeon? How many of you guys know this, first off? I, 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 are you asking this for your audience, or how many of you guys actually know this? I'm just curious. I'm, I mean, I know where the term shade, shade tree, tree mechanic comes from yeah. and right. such. Because, I mean, I've made videos on this. I'm not expecting you to have seen them. Not like you didn't see the video. What do you mean you haven't watched every minute of every you, video? You didn't do any I'm not research for this? I'm just wondering, like, oh, <laughs> do you know or what? No, I, I yeah. honestly don't know. And it's, it's, it's also for the, the listeners. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I was. I'm just curious. <laughs> um, so, obviously, there's the aspect of shade tree mechanic, so shade tree surgeon. So, like, I do everything under a shade tree, as in do it myself. But I, it's not even true. I don't do everything myself. Like, I'm. I know when I'm out of my depth, and I will, I will bring in a professional when it's necessary. <clears throat> but the shade tree surgeon comes from when I split my tongue. And I don't know if you you guys are familiar with the fact yeah. that I do have a split tongue, a bifurcated yes. tongue. Yes, a forked tongue. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I knew that. So, so how you do that, <laughs> I did that when I was a teenager. Um, I think I was 18 when I did that. And you did this yourself? I did it myself. <laughs> um, and so long story short, that's where the name comes from. You so, want to hear how stupid I, I fucking am? How much know. of a fucking retard I am? <laughs> I thought he used to be like an arborist. Like he he performed <laughs> surgery on shade that trees. Was, that's my biggest regret, dude. Everyone's like, I've had messages from people who watch the channel and be like, I cut down trees too, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's nice. <laughs> Good for oh, you, an honorable so, profession. Because so, so I'm like, okay, he lives in Florida. They have a lot of shade trees. Like it just makes fucking sense. <laughs> uh, the, uh, wow. the real answer is much more co- macabre. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> So a little bit more gruesome. <laughs> so you, I at the time, um, at the time I was very obsessed with manhood rituals, right? Um, and this was I don't know how familiar you guys are with the modern primitive movement. No, not, uh, at, not all. at all. This is like like a body modification thing that would really gain a lot of steam in like the late nineties, um, which when I did this, like early two thousands. Um, so. <laughs> how, how old are all you guys? I know. <laughs> that's, that's another thing, too. I feel like I'm like either right in the middle of where you guys' ages, or like I know a couple of you guys are older than I am. So, so I turned 37 this month. I okay, turned, so. I, I turned 36 I turned, this past January. Okay, we're all the same age. Then. And then Justin's and then Justin. 20. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> I'm 26. <laughs> okay. You know, when you, were talking, when you were talking about getting your bike, and Justin said, oh, it's like a Craigslist special. When we bought our first bikes, Craigslist didn't exist. Yeah, uh, no, the thrifty there was nickel. no such thing as yeah, Craigslist. The thrifty exactly. nickel, man. The thrifty nickel, the green sheets. <laughs> the green sheets, yeah. No, there was no such thing. It was like a dude who knew a dude. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know a guy. Yeah. That's how I always used to buy cars. It's like there was no internet. It was like the internet existed, but I feel like that's such a weird thing for people. They're going like, well, the internet's been around since you know, the 90s. I'm like, yeah, it has. I've yeah, been around since the 80s. It used to be like an <laughs> ultra luxury thing. Yeah. Like, I didn't I didn't have the internet in my house until like the fucking mid 2000s. Yeah. Because, you know? A, you didn't need to have it. Like if you need really needed to do something on the internet, you just went to the fucking library. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or school, yeah. Um, or cyber and so, cafe. Like, I would buy cars all the time. I used to be a mechanic. I would buy cars all the time and fix them up and try to make a profit selling them. And you just bought them on the side of the road. Yeah. You just drive around. You see, like, oh, there's one. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, you, you, and you just go up and ask them, you want to sell that car? Yeah, oh, that's the other thing, too, is like, man, dusty car in somebody's front yard, like, you wave a few hundred dollars under their nose, and all of a sudden it's fucking yours. Like, I'll take it, I'll take it today. <clears throat> wow. um, so anyway, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, and that's so what we do. I, yeah. I, I spoke my tongue, I was really obsessed with manhood rituals at the time, because, and like just so many teenagers, I just, uh, uh, passionate about it in only the way that a teenager can be passionate about something. <laughs> of course. And uh, so I've just gone like, I just I have to do something. I, American, I was like, Americans don't have manhood rituals. I was like, I'm 18 now. And again, like I had a really bad relationship with my parents, which probably led up to a lot of this. Like, because I was like, I, I was like, I need to be a man. I need to do this thing to be a man. And so I was like, I'm going to split my tongue as my manhood ritual, you know, and that's going to be because, you know, in other countries and other cultures, they go through these trials and tribulations and these just insane either feats of strength or or go through these pain rituals where you have to do this thing where you then transition to being a man. So I literally, I looked up how to split my tongue on, at the Peninsular Library computer <laughs> <laughs> on, a wow. website, on a website called bmezine.com. And they had instruction, an instructional article on how to split your tongue there. <laughs> wow. So what you do is you get your tongue pierced, which I did, and then you stretch that up to a four gauge. So oh. once you have four gauge in there, you then have to let that heal for like six months or something like that because you want to form a fistula. Uh -huh. uh, anchor point otherwise your tongue can grow back together so you want the scar tissue in there to form the anchor point up to the point that you're cutting to and so after that there's a few different methods uh and the one i used was the fishing line method because it's the most effective at stain and it's also the easiest to do by yourself holy shit nope see so, i'm a pussy when i burn I mean, could, my tongue couldn't you have gone to like I don't know, Michael's and got a freaking exacto knife. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, yeah, but then it's like what happens with that is a lot of people make ragged cuts. Um, God, it's really pass easy for it to grow back together. Like it's 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 still. I mean, it's surgery, dude. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Damn. You know, and you got to have four. You would have to have forceps <laughs> to hold your tongue while also cut it. I mean, it's your tongue is a. Thick piece of meat, dude. J Justin's over here having a, a mild <laughs> panic attack. <bro. laughs> so what you do is you take fishing line and you okay, thread good. it. We're still talking about you this. thread it. You thread it through the where you're piercing yeah. through the through the fistula, oh, no. and you tie it down as tight as it will go. Uh huh. And if you think you're like, oh, I could get it pretty tight. However tight you think you can get it, it's way tighter. Uh -huh. <laughs> like like tight and if i don't know if any of you guys fish if you've ever wrapped oh, yeah. fishing line around your finger on accident you know how oh, yeah easily you can be cut by fishing line yeah so i mean so i did that you know, and so what you do is you do that and then every day the the instructions were it was supposed to take a month a month of this it was supposed to take a month and you were supposed to like take breaks and like take it off and uh but i was like i'm gonna accelerate this process i'm gonna do it in a week because you're a man <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I just instead of like waiting a few days to put a new piece of fishing line, I put a new piece of fishing line on top of the old piece every day. Oh, shoo. so every day I would wake up and I would thread a new piece in. I would tie that one down as tight as it would go. Mm. Um. So. I still can't believe I did this. I, <laughs> I can't believe you did it either. This sounds like so then, when I was like, 18, starts, I would do this much work. It starts to cut through. And the idea of using fishing line is that it's healing as it's cutting through. It's not healing. It's not healed. But as you're cutting through, like, it's not just like an open, ragged, bleeding wound. It's cutting just yeah. a little at a time. Yeah. So after a week, it, I, it had not gone as fast as I had <clears throat> anticipated. So after about a week, I was, uh, and this is supposed to be about motorcycles. Um, <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, about you. you. This is about you. Um, after, after a week, I, uh, I was probably about ha a little over halfway through. 
Um, and when I and like I'm talking about this so calmly, this it was wretched agony. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, it was wretched agony. My tongue swelled up to like it looked like a toad in my mouth. <laughs> I, couldn't talk, I couldn't talk. I didn't eat like for the whole week. I didn't eat anything. Oh. I just like tried to like drink some broth. Uh, oh my god! And it was just like horrible, like <laughs> pounding head. My head was pounding. My lymph nodes were just like rocks, like <laughs> swollen up, freaking hard in my neck. <laughs> I mean, I re- literally felt I was just in a daze. I was like in a, I was in a, like in another world. You know, I've never been tortured before. I know some of these like high end military guys, like they go through like torture training, right? <clears throat> I've never been tortured. But I gotta imagine that's what it's like. <laughs> well, I mean, so so are you, you think that would be an effective uh, torture technique? Oof, fish and line. Yeah, I mean, it's tongue. gotta be, especially because like the horror of it being inside your mouth, like yeah. of All doing right. it to your tongue. All right, CIA, you know? take notes. <laughs> and it's just, and so I was just, I, I, like I said, I don't know what torture is like. It could be way worse than that. I'm not trying to be like I know what it's like to be tortured, but I have to imagine that's what it's like. Mm. <clears throat> just a never-ending assault of pain that just puts you in this weird mental state. It was crazy. It was crazy. I was a crazy person. Yes. Um, yes. You were a crazy person. So, That's so, most so you, accurate. And so you did so all by this. the end of it, by the end of the week I was losing, I was literally losing my mind. You know, I just, I felt like I was walking around in this daze, like nothing felt real. Um, I, w- I was like, I could die. I was like, I could die. Like, that's fine. You know, I was just in a really, <laughs> really, <laughs> weird, really weird mental spot. Um, because I said the pain was like just in off the charts and never ending. There was no relief. Um, mm. Not I didn't sleep. Like I would just lay down and just like throb, mm. you know. <laughs> I decided like I didn't. I don't think I slept for fucking for the whole week. Wow. Um, wow. So by working? the end of it, I'm like I said, I'm losing it, and I'm just like I have to. I'm I can't just stop. I'm almost i'm like over halfway through it like then you've got this huge like you'll have this huge line of scar tissue around your tongue like i'm committed this is it i have to i have to do this <clears throat> but i couldn't take it anymore so i just took a razor blade and i cut the rest of the way through it <laughs> and like i said that's something i'm i am actually deathly afraid of being cut um i hate being cut like especially with a razor with a very something very sharp where you can feel like the layers of your skin separate you know, cut you cut yourself with a razor blade and you feel your skin pop apart wow. that's like number one's horrible like the idea of that happening to me is just so awful are i mean we, nobody likes to be cut are we getting this on me, video for real, yeah yeah we're, we are getting this on video um, oh you, you it, so just, i just i like i locked so myself in the bathroom and i was like i'm gonna do it and i freaking steeled myself up and i just sawed through it with a razor blade so, wow. so we're recording all this on oh video as well. God, so we have dude. the two GoPros going, and Justin <clears throat> is turning a new shade of white. Man, <laughs> oh man, this is so great. <laughs> like if someone so said like, "Oh, I just took a blade and cut my tongue," I'd be okay. But there's so much detail in this story that I can feel it on my I own. Remember tongue. It. I remember it vividly. <laughs> this is so this is so wonderful. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> great. So. Um, so it popped open and it popped. Oh my God. <laughs> and so like when I got through, I was sawing and I remember thinking like, that's not, this isn't so bad. And like, I was like, that's not so bad. Like it felt like hot. I was like, I felt like I was just putting like a line of hot water on my tongue. I was like, this isn't so bad. I can do this. All right. So- and so it pops open <laughs> because I was like unconsciously like pulling it uh, to the side, you know? <clears throat> and then my, my the barbell that was in the piercing falls and hits the sink. I remember that so vividly. And it's just like ding, 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 ding. You know, it like lands in the sink. And I was like, I was like, oh god, it's there. It is. And I like pull this clump of fishing line of all the fishing line that had been in there out of my mouth. And I was like, I was like, oh, I did it. And I look in the mirror and I open my mouth and now I can open my tongue. And I can see blood pumping out of the side of my tongue <laughs> with my with my heartbeat. I can see it like going like pumping out with my heartbeat. It's like oh fuck. Like Ba-bum. I just I, I was like I Ba-bum. fucking I, I I just killed myself. I'm fucked. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I am so, so glad that that you have a real story for your fucking name. 
<laughs> wow. Oh. Like, like he didn't. He's like, he's like, oh yeah, you know, I, just, I went onto the internet and I put in, you know, a random name generator, and, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, it changed your shirt. I was like, fuck yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> wow. I like cutting down trees. <laughs> cutting down trees. <laughs> but, I thought it was a fucking arborist, but whatever. All right. So, Watching it pump out with my heartbeat, and I'm kind of like get real cold and like real, like real, like pale, and I'm just like really lightheaded. I can relate because I'm just like just there's so much blood, and really just like a lot of blood, and just it's like a fucking horror movie, dude. And I'm just like just fucking with you like now. A, dude, how do you stop like a wound fucking... in your mouth? <laughs> What do you, you don't put a fucking band aid on it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's like, I, that's where I Shade Tree Surgeon came from. I just I couldn't get it to stop, and I was just like, dude, I'm, what am I gonna do? So eventually, I'd lost a lot of blood. Like I said, I was already in a really weird mental state of <laughs> like, I don't care if I live or die. Um, so I was just like, well, fuck it, I'm tired. Like I haven't slept in a week. So I just stuffed my mouth full of gauze, like in between there, and just like stuff where I couldn't even close my mouth. I just stuffed it full, and I just went to sleep. As one would do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if I wake up, I wake up. If I don't, I don't. And, then, and obviously, I woke up, so everything turned out fine. Man, so, so you're a man now, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh shit, I would say so. <laughs> He's officially earned his manhood card. And then, but and it's not over. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, the, the now comes the aftercare. You don't just split your tongue and go like whoopty fucking do. Now you're ready to go. What happens is if you don't take care of it, it will grow back together. Mm-hmm. So, for about forty five days to two months after that, Dang. twice a day, I had to scrape off all the scar tissue with. Uh, with dental floss oh. on the other side. Why didn't you just use fishing line? Um, I don't know. I use dental <laughs> so yeah. um, I think because that's what it said in the in the instructions. Oh, Remember, so. he he had detailed instructions from the internet. <laughs> from the internet. <laughs> and, <laughs> the internet cannot lie. Can't lie on the internet. Can't lie. Yeah, it said to use dental floss, so I used dental floss. I think it. I think that the fishing line wouldn't catch the scar tissue as good as the dental floss, which has like it's like threaded, so it has a little more. Well, that makes sense. Surface catch, area to catch the scar tissue on the side, but that was horrible too. Just it was so painful to just like every day wake up and just like scrape it off till it's bleeding again. <laughs> um, and pulling it apart in the morning was just like because it grow back together and you go to sleep. So uh, morning, you got to take it and just like yank it apart and it starts bleeding again. It was just fucking awful. So moving back to motorcycles. Um, so that's where Shade Tree Surgeon comes from. I think he's given the most blood for a YouTube name was, yeah. across the entire platform, not even motovloggers. Like the most, that's the most epic story ever. Yeah. All right, so you recently started racing dirt bikes. How has that yes. process been? Uh, one of one of the most rewarding things I've ever done on two wheels. I mean, absolutely amazing. So you guys I, made it by dirt bikes, I'm telling you. It's uh it's just it's so rewarding. It's so uh it's and you know, you ride motorcycles forever and I'm not I ride motorcycles every day. I'm not by any means bored with riding motorcycles. But it's just the difference between tra- – I mean, motorcycles are transportation, and dirt bikes is you are playing a sport. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's the difference between wearing a backpack to school and hiking the Appalachian Trail. You know, and it's it just – it's so fun, and it's so challenging, and you could try your entire life to do it well and still suck at it. It's super fucking hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. Any dipshit can ride a motorcycle. Um, well, and yeah, we you, know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Riding it, and, and you know anybody can ride a dirt bike too, but riding on a competitive level and and pushing it hard is you just you're like wow, dude, this is this is this is difficult. This is very very difficult. So for our audience, you don't ride dirt bikes on like a track. You actually do no trail style competition the, the, correct hair scrambles yeah. right yep. hair scrambles. it's hair scrambles so motocross I, that's fine i guess i'm just not a motocross guy like it's just the attitude of people there is the, a lot of times a little different um you get they're just i don't know it's it's for kids man it's motocross elitist it's, it's, a, it's a very elitist attitude it's yeah. a very broad nation so, 
Yeah. Um, and there's a, the jumping part of it is like there's a lot of jumps in the stuff that we do, but like these big triples and stuff like that, it's just it's super high risk. Yeah. Um, so it's just I'm not really into it. Okay. Yeah. What I do is more like it's the difference between, um, and also it's it's just a completely different set of muscles and skills. Yeah. So a lot of you, know, you do a thirty minute moto. That's a that's a, a motocross thirty minutes, right? It's just so such a different set of muscles. It's so balls of the wall, and it's so difficult. It's the difference between sprinting and running a marathon. Yeah. Now, the, here's the thing. So people are like, oh, I couldn't do a hair scramble. I couldn't like ride for fucking two and a half hours or whatever it is. Or I couldn't do that. That's crazy. Like at a speed, whatever. You think you can't do it, but you ever you ever go look at the people who do like a tough mutter or people who run marathons? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you go, you go, and you're like, I could never run a marathon. And you see how many fat sacks of shit you see running a marathon? <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. And you see these people in tough, you're like, I could never do a tough mutter. And you see all these fucking fat asses, you're like, what? <laughs> how do you do that? And that's, and there's a couple different reasons for that. And one is like, the human body is, our, our, our capability for endurance is unsurpassed in the in nature true yeah we we have an endurance level that is so fucking off the charts compared to almost almost any other animal um and so you can do way more than you think so if someone held a gun to your head and said run five miles you would run five miles oh i might have to die <laughs> you would do it you I mean, could do it i mean have you ever have you ever seen me on uh, justin's videos i'm kind of a fatty <laughs> you would be you would be shocked you could do it because the human body is capable of so much more than you than you think it is it's so mental and so these long races where you're just like i could never do that it's like yeah actually you can um and if you're in if you put yourself in the mental spot of just doing it and not giving up and i that's a place i i enjoy going of going like okay well how the fuck am i going to complete this like i like it's super hard or it's very difficult but and you so if you just choose not to give up, you choose not to stop. And so I just go like, OK, I'm just going to choose not to stop. Like I could pull over like there's nobody ho holding a gun to your head. You could pull over after, you know, 20 miles and be like, I don't feel like doing it anymore. No one's going to give you any shit. Plenty of people do. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go the distance and you just choose not to stop. Cool. And that, right. that's it. Man, he's making me miss it so much. <laughs> All right. Um, so you own a bar, right? It's more of like a family business. Okay. But yeah, I run, I'd say, let's say I run a bar. Okay. So is it all that's cracked up to be? I don't know. That's a living, man. <laughs> hey. The fuck do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm, I'm a risk advisor. Yeah. Is so what's cracked up to be? No. <laughs> I, I get paid to eat, sleep, and talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it's running a running a bar, um, as a as a living or as a trade is fine. It's um, running it is easy. Um, it's a very easy business. You deal in easy prices there's not a lot of fluctuation um and and the prices of what stuff costs you know which is nice so basically like you're just running a cash register right like you have you have a storefront and you sell a product this is business 101 yep you yep. know yep. so but after that ever it does get weird so creating an environment and creating a place where people want to be, um, a public, creating a public house, mm -hmm. being a public in, um, that's, that's a whole different concept. And then also staying off the sauce. Like you can't, yeah. don't get high yeah. supply like that. That's difficult. And I struggled with that for many years. Yeah. I worked, yeah. worked at a few bars myself and that's always been a problem for people. Yeah. Oh, I, see, yeah. I see on Bar Rescue, if you walk in and everyone working there is drinking, I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be fun. Well, who, who <laughs> opens – it's and so everybody says this. Everyone goes like, bars fail. And, of course, I was brought into it by uh, this guy, Richard Boom, who brought me in to the bar business when I was 21 years old um, and taught me everything I know. 
And so I like I never like if I had to open a bar, I could I don't have the money to do that. It's insanely expensive. So that's why I say it's like a family business. Like I've just I've been like grandfathered into the existing business. All right. Um, and then, you know, Richard is semi retired now. And so I run the bar and it's, you know, but <clears throat> regardless, it's um, I don't know. It's nice. It's it's a way to make a living. It's very demanding. Anybody who runs a small business will know that it's not it's a 24 hour job. You know, it's not like I go to work and then I clock out. You know, you got to be willing to do everything for free. That's oh, a thing. Yeah. There's no there's no like hourly pay. You know, it's like people are like, well, how do you get paid? I'm like, I don't know. Well, I, I don't <laughs> come buy a beer. And, uh, <laughs> come, come buy a beer like, from my bar and uh, yeah, I get yeah. paid. <laughs> And I, I mean, and then like the bar has a bank account. Like that's not, that's not like a piggy bank. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and people are like, oh man, you had an awesome night. I'm like, yeah, it goes in the bar bank account. I'm not like, sweet, I get to <clears throat> put all that money in my bank account. You know, like, <laughs> like that's not how, that's not how you do it. Yeah. You know, some people do, and those people aren't in business very long. True. Yeah, we were talking to one of the guys at the casino we were at, and we were like, oh, I bet you you love this. He goes, I get paid $15 an hour whether you walk away broke or win $1,000. <laughs> yep. Well, <laughs> oh, I see. Like, that's me. I was just like, oh. And it's not even that. There's no hourly There's no hourly wage. There's no paycheck. There's nothing like that. Like, you know, we'll do, we'll do nice – if we have a really awesome month or something, like, we'll do nice stuff for ourselves. But, you know, you can't treat it like a piggy bank. You basically treat the bar – like a person, you say, I have a boss, my boss is the cash register. And so that's who I'm, who I'm working for Yeah, is, is making, making money and making sure the bar has an awesome bank account. There's a lot of money in it. That way, if, if shit hits the fan in my life, um, then I'm like, okay, I, I'm like, that's no problem. Like if I fucking, you know, totally hit the brakes, I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm like, no problem because the bar is there to take care of me. Hmm. Uh, so I, and we're not like, this is just the way we do it. I'm sure a lot of people do everything a different way <clears throat> as far as working. It's great. You know, it's like you go to work to bartend, which is where I make the bulk of my money. Like my take home money is just like bartending and working for tips. Um, that's fun. You just go and hang out. Like it's like, imagine power walking, for 14 hours while also um, having a conversation with 50 different people. <laughs> and you then lost, also, you lost me at power walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then also having to like every once in a while like fight somebody for like no fucking reason at all. That's why I'm out there. I'd say you just say <laughs> Kinsey is just perked up. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm yeah. Out there, right? I love that shit. I hate. I'm so. I am. I am. I hate violence. I am a I am a fucking pacifist. Oh, I, I don't I enjoy hate. violence, but I'm not scared of it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a pacifist oh, too. Dude, getting, Someone throws a punch, I'm a pacifist the, to his face. <laughs> getting punched in the face is the worst. <laughs> I mean, so no, I don't know. Been, I mean, I've been punched in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather take a shot in the face. That's fine, dude. I'll take any. I, getting punched in the face sucks so <laughs> bad. And so this is something I say all the time is that if you've never been punched in the face by a full grown man who is hell bent on hurting you, like not like a oh, get away from me or just or, but like punched in the face by someone who's like, I'm fucking out to hurt you, then you, you it's. A, it changes your – it's an attitude adjustment. The rules are off the table at that point. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been in fights. I'm not saying you haven't been in a fight, but like getting into a scuffle and rolling around on the ground and kind of taking a couple body shots or pushing somebody's face. Like, no, I'm talking about getting punched in the fucking nose by a man. Yeah. <laughs> and it fucking hurts. And yeah. It's I mean, really bad. And you'll have black eyes and like your whole face swells up. And it's just awful. So – Every time I have to throw somebody out or I end up getting into a confrontation, I weigh it against getting punched in the face. <laughs> I mean, that's not a terrible way to go through with it. So that's a great – yeah, that's a, that's a and so that's why I say, you know why – you know why some people talk so much shit? They've never been punched in they, the face. They've never been punched in 
punched in the face by a man. Because <laughs> <laughs> once you get punched in the face by a man for talking shit, and trust me, dude, you, I got a big mouth. I've been punched in the face for talking shit before. Once you get punched in the face a couple times, then like when you start to say something, you start to take an action. You're like, well, I'm going to weigh this again against getting punched. We, and, we call that a risk nah, analysis. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pass. I'm passing on this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a risk analysis. Do I impact and likelihood? What's the impact of my comment? What's the likelihood that this fool is going to punch me in the nose? <laughs> and I could even say like getting punched once or something, but I've been punched in the face like a bunch of times. You can punch um, because face. like it's in the bar, people are obviously they're drunk, and uh, the dirty shame is in an entertainment district. So think um, the French Quarter. Mm. Oh, okay, uh, that's Ebor City. So <clears throat> it's a long strip that's full of bars and nightclubs and restaurants. Um, it's just like a mini New Orleans. So that's important because it's not like somebody's walking into the bar. Like most bars, they somebody walks in. They know the place. Mm-hmm. They've been there before. <clears throat> you know, or it's a place where you're like, yeah, I don't know. It just being in an entertainment district and bar hopping puts people in this like really manic, heightened state of uh, ridiculousness. Like <clears throat> they're ready to start a fight for no reason. And the streets are wild. You know, you walk down the streets and it's just fucking madness and drunk people and women fucking flashing their tits and just cars booming stereos. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, fucking, it's Sodom Gomorrah, you know, it's fucking, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's an adult entertainment district. We need, we need to go to Florida. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm saying we need to go. Road trip. Road, Road trip. trip. Road so trip. <laughs> when you, so it just also, but so you get some random person who's from a fucking square state, you know, it's like fucking Billy, Billy badass from pig knuckle, Idaho, like walks in the bar after he's been up and down the street all night with a fucking drunk on <clears throat> and you know we don't kinder to that shit at the shame dude i don't fucking you know i say i say i don't like violence and i don't but you know we have our regulars and i don't enjoy it when somebody changes the mood of a bar oh yeah somebody walks in <clears throat> and one person one person's energy can completely change the mood of a bar and I'll fucking throw somebody out for that. Yeah. And a lot of times people are confused because they're just like, why am I, why am I being asked to leave? And I'm just like, cause I don't, cause I don't like you. So speaking of I don't, that. Like, I don't understand. I'm like, I don't, I don't fucking like you. I don't like your energy. I don't like your shirt. I don't like. What, I don't it's like. I don't like the way you fucking walked in here. Too many rides down. Like the way I don't like the way you slid my bar stool so casually. Like, I, okay. <laughs> this is my fucking living room, dude, and you're disrespecting it, so you gotta fucking go. And people get confused because they're like, they think it's like Chili's, where they're gonna write like a strongly worded email to corporate and Let give me, me talk a to the manager. <clears throat> and I'm like, no, dude. What's gonna happen is. Um, if you fucking mouth off and you're an asshole in here, I'm going to stomp a fucking mud hole in your ass, throw you on the streets, call the cops, and you'll go to jail. Because <laughs> I'm gonna... a respected businessman. <laughs> 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 so speaking of things you don't like. Why... No. Oh, I'm going to tell you one more thing. This is like my intro to a bar. When I say Richard, this is so funny. Richard used to do this to me all the time. Like he'd walk up to some dude who had like wronged him. And Richard is like, God, he'll fight anybody. I've been in so many fist fights with him. Like, <laughs> and he would just like, he'd be like, Josh, come here, come here, get over here. And I'd be like, all right, Richard, what's up? And he'd like walk over to some fucking hapless dipshit sitting in a bar stool with like a fucking dumb look on his face. And he'd be like, any he point at him, he goes, I want you to, Beat this guy's ass, <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd walk away. And, I'd look, and the dude, the dude who probably doesn't know what he did, like spit on the floor or something. Who knows? And like the dude's looking at me like, w- "What's going on?" I'm like, well, I'm, "You gotta I'm, go, or I'm you're gonna, gonna kick your ass, <laughs> dude." That's what's going on. <laughs> He's like, I, "I don't understand. Where'd that guy go? I won't talk to the owner." I was like, "No, you gotta go." No, because <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to beat you up if you don't go right now. And you do that to me all the time as like my like this is how I'm teaching you how to. <laughs> I'm mentoring you. This is how you run a bar. You kick people's asses. <laughs> so, so on yeah, the topic, ridiculous now. On the topic of things you don't like, and we're not, we're not, you know 
pushing any judgment here, but why do you cast so much shade on Harley? Because oh, it's just, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not low hanging fruit, dog. That is on the ground. Hi. Okay. Um. So I, I have Fair. nothing against Harley Davidson. What I do find really funny is how wrapped up people get in the identity of Harley Davidson. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. So when somebody, and Harley, good on him, genius marketing. Um. But when somebody has wrapped up, it's. A Harley Davidson motorcycle for a large portion of the people who own them is a personality replacement device. Um, PRD. So, Hashtag PRD. <laughs> you, can, you can show up and you you can see and you see someone says, "Who are you?" You know, metaphorically, "Who are you?" And you just point at the Harley and you say, "That's who I am." Mm-hmm. And it's just like. It's built in. I, I can you know? see that. So that's who I am. That that, the Harley. Or they wouldn't even have to ask because they had the Harley <laughs> Davidson do rag, the Harley Davidson exactly, shirt, the Harley Davidson boots. But that's, and, and I say <laughs> metaphorically, who are you? Nobody asks who are you, but metaphorically, like when you show up to the scene and you want, it's like this is this is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> look at me. Look at this. me. And that's fine. Um, that's fine. I, I don't I don't fucking care, dude. Do your thing, man. Have your fun. I think that that's great and. For a lot of people, it puts them in a in a club where they feel accepted and they have immediate friends. It's like a it's like buying a ticket to a, to a club, you know, where you show up and you go like, well, all right, well, you know, you're you, you I know I like this much about you because you also are into this, and I can tell you're into this because you have the correct accoutrements. To it. So you you know, it's like this litmus test of like finding friends, <clears throat> and that's fine. But what I find what is amusing to me is these people like that are very easy to rile up because on on a certain level they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you start calling that out and you start poking the hornet's nest, the people just they get so defensive. And they get defensive because you're just like, dude, I know what you're doing. Like I know. <laughs> I think it further proves your point when they get defensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And when they're like crying about it, like no, it it means this, and having a Harley's blah blah blah. I'm like, dude, just it's it's a bike that you paid yeah. money. For. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talking about getting paid money or whatever, we need to kick it over for an ad break. So. Over oh, to you, cool. Kent. I, gotta, I gotta I gotta piss anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go do that. You've heard us talking about Get Lowered Cycles on many of our episodes, and now we have partnered with Get Lowered to give the B2W listeners something extra. When you spend $100 or more, Get Lowered will hook you up with a free Get Lowered shirt. All you have to do is head over to GetLowered.com, choose the parts and gear you need, and when you check out, use the coupon code B2WPodcast, that's B, the number 2, WPodcast, and put your shirt size in the notes section. All right. So we're back. Talking with Shade Tree Surgeon, who's on a potty break right now. Man, dude, I thought you were going to freaking pass out. I felt like I was going to pass out. <laughs> I was legit lightheaded, <laughs> and I felt cold. <laughs> I, I was about to go get the happy vape pen. Man, was... Dude, the amount of detail that was going into it, I was just like, oh, God, I can feel it. <laughs> it was just so wonderful. The, I mean, between the story and you, oh, I couldn't God. help myself. Yeah. <laughs> And we are video recording this as well, so as long as the video sh- uh, holds up, I mean, we had some technical issues in the last few episodes, but as long as this one holds up, we're totally posting this one to YouTube. So uh, for, oh, yeah. You're for our awesome. listeners, be sure to go check out the YouTube link at betweentwowheels.com and click on the YT up in the upper right corner. Yeah, just watching you go from, like, white to pink. <laughs> to white to pink. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I know that stuff that you're not going to be able to see on camera. Oh, man. I felt it, man. I was getting lightheaded. <laughs> I felt my heart beating. I was like, oh, what the hell? All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm back. That is so great. All right. So this section of the the intimate sit-down with Shade Tree Surgeon is going to be around YouTube and content creation. So we'll go with the biggest YouTuber in our room, Justin. Okay, so um, your name, your channel actually got brought up very early into my uh, YouTube career. Uh, I think it was actually before I even had my own channel. Um, one of the guys that got me into it was Do It With Dan, and he spoke 
about you as if you were the godfather of motovlogging. And now he is, <laughs> and now he's, I mean, over a million uh, yeah. subscribers. What, what do you think of that title? Uh, there was, oh God, so many people doing it before me. Like, so many people. But people doing it and people doing it well Correct. are different things. I mean, when you've got some of the biggest, the biggest motovloggers, we on all the came scene. up together. That's no, we all started at the same time. Like, so, who is who is in your on your? Who's your graduating class? Hmm. You know, it's you and it's uh, Blockhead, Me, Blockhead, Dan, Dan. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's these guys that are like you guys kind of started at the same time. You were doing similar things. You found that's how you found each other because a lot of people when they first start making content, I well, something I did. I looked for channels that were doing something similar to me, and that were at a similar size as me. Yeah. And that's and I was just like, hey, what's up? You know, let's let's do this together. Let's collaborate. Let's talk. Let's let's do this because you guys are on. We're all trying to accomplish the same thing. And so that – mine was – it was me, um, Suburban Delinquent, um, EN187, uh, Do It With Dan, <clears throat> Arson Rides, Baker X Derek. No, Baker X Derek had the big channel. He had a big channel at the time. Um, he was the big guy. But even before Baker X Derek, like EN187 had the biggest channel. He had like 4,000 subscribers. Wow. And that was – he <laughs> had like – he was like, oh, man, he's got a big channel. And so me and Dan and Sub D and all these other – and a bunch of guys who don't make videos anymore. We all kind of started at the same time uh, making content. So that's how we all fucking got to know each other. And then gotcha. you know, a lot of them did much better than I did, like Dan and uh, Nick and Sub D and all those guys. But, you know, I'd, so I so saying this, the Godfather, you know what I did different? I'll say I feel okay saying this. Um I feel I always feel bad saying like I did this or I started this. There's always somebody who did it first. There's mm -hmm. always somebody yeah. who did it first. But when it's as so much as it comes to like the specific niche category of motorcycle YouTube videos, uh, what I what I saw um, was everybody just did these videos on their bike, and they would that's it. They were on their bike and they wouldn't show anything else. And I remember being, I remember thinking that like, that's so dissatisfying. Um, like, why didn't you show the place you went into? Like, why didn't you show where you were going? Mm, yeah. And so nobody was doing that. And that's what I did. Then that's how I started my channel is like, I'm not going to just like go to a place and be like, all right, we're here and shut off the camera. I'm going to be like, no, this is what we did when we get here. Yeah. Um, people who say stuff like it's not about the destinations about the journey are not going to very cool destinations. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, part, part, part of that journey Absolutely. is being at that destination. Yeah. yeah I'm just, yeah. I hate, I hate that. I'm the whole journey about. you're thinking like, oh man, it's going to be so cool. Like, I, was like, I don't know where you're going, dude. Maybe you went to a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's a shitty destination. Yeah. <laughs> you got, I'm Justin, going somewhere cool. <laughs> Justin got that a lot when we did the, our big bend ride. Because yeah. Because they, everyone was like, oh, we want to see more riding, more riding, more riding. Like, this is the fun that we were having here. Yeah. Yeah. You Everybody know. wants to see something. What do you want to make? That's what I always say. Everybody wants to see something. I don't give a fuck what people want to see. I want to make what I want to make. Right. And the yeah. people who want to see it will stay. Exactly. Amen. Actually, that's a great transition to our next question is, to you, what has been the biggest factor to building your channel and the Shade Tree Surgeon community? The Shade Tree Army? Yeah. Oh God, I struggled over that forever. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna call it? And then I was like, I for a long, we're we're in Florida, so we're like in Tampa, so this is all shock jock central. So Bubba Army was always a big thing from Bubba the Love Sponge. I don't know oh, if you guys are yeah, familiar. Yeah, I know Bubba the Love Sponge. Yep. Um. So Bubba Army was huge here, and I was and I always was thinking like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to say Shade Tree Army. And then I was just like, uh, then it's like military guys are going to be like, you're not in the army. And I'm like, well, army <laughs> is a word that means a group of people. Like, it's not like <laughs> the army. <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying it's a the army. I'm not Trademark. saying sh shade tree, special forces, marine recon. Like, it's fucking army. Actually, you know can we I mean? get a shirt that says that? Because yeah, I, I, I would buy that. <laughs> 
So, but, and then I, and finally I was just like, I didn't feel like thinking about it anymore because I thought it was stupid. So I was just like, fine, fucking change your army. <laughs> and then I was, I've always just kind of done the weirdo thing too. That was like way more. So anyway, building the community. Sorry, I should answer that question. What was it, the deciding factor? Like, what, what was the question? What has been the biggest factor to building it, in your opinion? Luck? Um, because <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> luck luck like, with the algorithm. Like, what was my tipping point? Like, what do you? Yeah, like, is there a certain thing that you did within your content or something that kind of? changed how fast the channel was growing or things like that like for me for example no, like when i started I've my build series break, i've never had a big break i gotcha. keep wait, waiting for it dude <laughs> <laughs> i feel the like I've, I've paid my dues i'm ready i'm ready for the ride to the top man. right <laughs> no i've never had that like overnight success i've never had like oh my god i just got like a thousand subscribers in one day that's yeah, never that's happened never happened yeah not not even like that i know some people are like there a thousand is a bad day for them. Yes. That's never fucking happened. It's always been like if I it's just been slow growth the whole fucking time. And it's so people are like, well it's better that way. I'm like, okay. I but what, what is so is it better <laughs> than getting fifty thousand subscribers out of nowhere? No. No. The fuck kind of quite what the fuck kind of thing to say is that? It's like it's better to grow it slow. I'm like I disagree. No, that's the <laughs> dumbest shit I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Yeah, I want, a, I want a whole bunch all at once, and then other people will see it. And, yeah, and yeah, then I get more. Like, I'll take it all. Like, it's all exponential yeah. right now. Like, what do you mean? Better to go slow? Like, oh, it's just, it's just like this weird like thing where people have to say everything is the best way because that's what's happening. Which I yeah. don't feel that way. Do you think that's I, kind of like the whole you know getting pooped on by a bird's good luck only are said by people who have been pooped on by a bird? It's very. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm just like, why would you? Why do you feel the need yeah. <laughs> to somehow f get into this philosophy thing where you're like, this is better? Just, you're like, don't lie to shit happens. It's, it's a shitty happens. situation. <laughs> it's not better. Like, I, people are like, well, you're doing it the right way. It's like, no, I'm trying really hard <laughs> to to like have it blow up. Like, I try. Yeah. Like, it's like I'm not trying. Whatever. Whatever though. Um, I would say the deciding factor to the growth that I have seen is hard work, persistence, and um, consistency. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, for the first time in ye literally years, I, I'm not going to have a video this coming Sunday. So I'm, I'm going to do a live stream instead, just so I, there's not I'm not missing a day of content. But I have released two videos a week for year, literally years. Wow. That's impressive. Um, that is impressive. <laughs> and I don't miss a day. And like I said, if I do miss a day, I'll do a live stream cool. just so wow. there's, there's, there is content that day. And that's been my biggest factor is just no matter what, two videos a week. So, so, two, oh. so two videos oh. a week for going on for years now. So your, your channel gets a lot of angry comments. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, does, how does that affect you and, and how do you respond usually? I don't know, man. There's always going to be a certain amount of people who don't like you. So if you take 100 people, there's going to be a certain percentage of those 100 people that don't like your style. Yep. So all it is on YouTube comments and getting a lot of angry ones is I'm just opening, I'm just making that a larger number. Yep. So <clears throat> comments, angry comments are like, here's what I always say. If you read a comment and it legitimately makes you mad. You're like, I'm, I'm fucking typing all mad, and it legitimately bothers you, then uh, it's time for a little self-reflection, Bubba, because there's probably a couple nuggets of truth in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So do, so do you respond to, to any angry comments? Oh, yeah. All the time, man. Just for fun, you know? <laughs> but I don't spend a lot of time on them because, like, if they do, if they're saying something that's true, um, that I'm just like, oh fuck, you got me. Then I, what do I do? Yeah. What I'm gonna do? Argue with them? Normally, I just don't respond because I'm like, well, obviously you're like, you're way too excited about getting me. You know, like, <laughs> like, I, you're just like, you just got such a boner over it. So I'm just like, I'm not even gonna respond to you. But that doesn't mean I don't take it into account. I'm just like, all right, well, that was right. That's true, and I'll, you know, I'll reflect on it and, you know, move on from there. And but. For as far as like the straight negative comments, like I don't know, man. There's so many people who support me, 
and <clears throat> so many people who who support the channel in a lot so many different ways that I have a finite amount of time to spend on YouTube and and the people and my subscribers so I choose to spend more of that time on the people who are really legitimately into my content yeah. not even positive I'm not saying like I only deal with positive people I just deal with the people who are invested in what I'm doing yeah I mean yeah there's there's a difference between you know being negative and being you know having an actual criticism yeah constructive, and I've criticism. So constructive criticism that, so many people who have given me shit like um who I'm like I've like won over <laughs> you, you you know you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So when somebody could like just a lot of times somebody like jumps on to like be all mad about one thing I did wrong, like I'll come at him and be like, hey man, you're right, you know, and like uh, blah blah blah. And I'll just I take it on the chin because that's the only way to do it. Um, and I've got a lot of those people <laughs> who are like huge fucking huge fans now. Just because I didn't come at them fucking like like an asshole, I didn't come at them with a chip on my shoulder because they dared call me out like you can't do that that's my job yeah yeah so, so <laughs> i justin, only jump in when it's like no you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> so justin you know he he doesn't do a lot of the well back in the earlier days he didn't do any really confrontational comments but he had his hit squad ken and i jump on there and start <sighs> ripping I'd, people to i'd shreds. slap someone's dick out of their hand real fast just fucking <laughs> shit <their giggles. laughs> so so this question you are known as the most open moto vlogger out there, not trying to be politically correct, and sometimes coming across as an ass. Now, I want to read some uh, Reddit <laughs> things uh, on. Is that real? Do I come across as an ass? No, is but that, no, no, no. But I mean, I don't think so. So, on your uh, FTR video, the 2019 FTR 1200. Yeah. On Reddit, some guy says another crappy commentary with no insider imagination using same photo that has been out for a spell. For a spell. And this this they they get on the uh the the bandwagon on this thread. Fuck that guy, seriously, he's a clown. <laughs> and I'm just I want to be the I am so jealous of Shay Tier right now because he has an entire Reddit post dedicated to shit talking him. Like yeah. where how can I get on that level? <laughs> <laughs> um, and this 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 other guy, BCM nineteen eleven on Reddit. Bravo <laughs> Charlie out. Mike nineteen eleven. I've watched a couple of this ass hats videos and all I see him or all I see is him pretending to shine a light on motorcycle stereotypes while being a classic example of one himself. No matter what he's <laughs> reviewing or talking about, you're a hipster millennial garbage for liking it. <laughs> so with that being said and So what that tells me is he didn't finish the video. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. So is would you say that that side of you know when you're doing your reviews and you're moto vlogging and you're and you're out in the dirt bike, is that a persona, or is that how you are the majority or all the time? Well, no, it's not a persona. I mean, I'm just willing to say what I think. That's, I mean, the way I say it, I, 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 you know, I hype it up because let me tell you, if you guys have. Anybody who's been on camera knows that if you just talk like you would talk to another human being on yeah. camera, you look flat and lifeless. Yeah, right. Like you have to turn it up to eleven to even seem normal on yep. camera. And a lot of people don't get that. Oh uh, yeah, um, that's that was one of the things I struggled with when I started my channel, is saying the same things and being the same person. But just saying it in a different way to where it didn't sound like I was a science teacher. And see, and I, I learned yeah. that as well being on justin's channel yeah and basically you gotta, when you, you gotta be you, so extra if just you're engaging if you're engaging the camera you need to engage the camera like it's a dog <laughs> <laughs> all right and i love dogs we all love dogs here so it's just and you give it that extra just it's a great dog <laughs> who's ready for the next video are you ready for the next video <laughs> and so it's true and so some people um recognize that and they can tell that you're putting it on a little bit and they think that they're special because they're calling it out but I've, i don't even hide it People are like, I got you. That's not you. You talked a different way in your other video. I'm like, 
Yeah, well, yeah. it's a different what video. Do you want? Okay. It's called acting asshole. <laughs> like I'm making I'm making <laughs> content that that's supposed to be entertaining. Like if you if you're just here to get me, then I mean, knock yourself out if that's how you're entertaining yourself, but <laughs> fucking white knights, man. I've got dislikes on my videos before uh, they're even as live. As far as like the people who are like uh, talking sh- sh- I I don't know. Everybody some people aren't going to like you, man. Yep. Like that's fine. And they have such a small there i would say their biggest sin um i don't care that they don't like me like not everyone's gonna like you and you got to be okay with that and if you just if you're (laughs) it's so easy to say but if you're just if you're trying to please everybody then you're not going to please anybody it's so cliche but it's so true um and they're big but their biggest sin and this is something i've fallen prey to myself uh, many times, so I recognize it in myself, and w- which is why it's so easy for me to forgive it in other people. Is they see such a minute part of who I am. Yes. Like they That's go fair. like this. They they this guy and blah blah blah, and they make all these assumptions and uh, about who I am and what I'm like off of like. A video they didn't even finish. Yep. Like, so you watch you watch me talk about a motorcycle for seven minutes, and you think you know who I am? Yeah, oh yeah. Like, oh, all right. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like, if that's all it takes for you to to get the to to get the ken of a of another human, then you're you are way better at it than I am. And <laughs> I do. I, but and so that. But I've done it. Like I'm guilty of that. And I think anybody who engages on social media, YouTube, whatever, is also guilty of it because you're we're all human. You know, somebody says something we don't like or we disagree with, like it touches a part of our brain that makes us angry and makes us go like, well, this person's bad because they don't like what I like or they said something bad about what I like. So I don't like them now. That's so pr- that's primal, man. You know, and that's. And so you get like this idea, like you create this villain in your head of what they must be like because you don't like them. I've done that with people like, I I hate this YouTuber, like this motherfucker. I don't like him because he did this and he said that. And then like I'll have to step back and be like, I don't know who, I don't know this guy. (laughs) Like I know this small part of his life that I've like, and it's just so you just got to catch yourself. And so it's a it's an easy one for me to forgive. So when these guys are on Reddit saying this clown and blah, 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 I'm just like, all right, all right man, like, whatever, dude. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so at at the end of our interviews, we have three questions that we like to ask. Is it over? Were you... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we had two piss breaks, even. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so well, man, I'm gonna go for a while. <laughs> we we ask we ask our the three favorite questions. Okay. Um, so if money is not an option, what is the bike you'd buy? What would be your favorite bike that you'd buy all if right. you had all the money in the world? I don't know, man. All right, good answer. <laughs> Solid. I, I, I mean, like, it's just a weird question to answer, like. Should I, should I have an answer? Like, oh, I would buy. If you had a million bike. bucks, what know, bike would you go out and buy? I think it's a little bit different with I'm bikes and happy cars. With, I'm pretty happy with the <laughs> bikes I have now. You know, I would like to buy. Um, I think you want. So a this glide. is not coming out for a few weeks. So I actually, you and um, you know, because you're on my um, Patreon, but I'm going to pick up an FXR. Um, Tomorrow I'm I'm going to pick up that bike. So yep, you got it first. If I had too. a bunch of <laughs> if I had a bunch of money, I would probably buy like a new S and S for that bike, which is what I want to eventually do. Ah, okay, I can get um, with that. like a one twenty four. Yeah, no, I want a forty two. I want it. I want it to be a big inch, and I'm I'm toying with the idea of doing an Ultima. Just because I want to see if I can contact them because they, for some reason, they have such a bad rap. Like I've talked to a couple of mechanics and a couple of guys, and they're like, "Yeah, they had some, they had some problems in the '90s, but they make way better engines now." And I want to be like, "Hey, do you want guys want to like work something out and give me a big inch Ultima and like I'll fucking beat beat the snot out of it on camera and kind of help you guys?" But I don't know, you know. Yeah. yeah. Ultima compared to S and S, Ultima is a very old school company. 
Yeah. Um, like you, you go like go to their website. Like <laughs> SNS is like all over social media and all this stuff. Like SNS is like on top of it. And Ultima has got this website that looks like they made it on Angel Fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just really, really like all sorts of different neon colors. You're like, who fucking whose nephew made this website for you? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if they're if I'm gonna be like, hey, uh, like give me a discount on Engine and I'll like make a bunch of videos around it, and they're gonna be like, wait, what's YouTube? Get out of here. <laughs> So, so what I took. <laughs> so from yeah, so, all so of I don't that, know. That's I guess that's what I, I don't. I don't fucking know, dude. What? What do you mean? What bike would you buy? <laughs> well, so I. I what I heard. Question, the, ask that question. To the next twenty-two year old is on your fucking. Uh, <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. I'm grown so, ass man. A new bike. I don't know. A nice bike. I, a road I, glide. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. He wants a Harley, people. He wants a Harley. We're just gonna use that sound clip. We're actually gonna trash the rest of the episode. Yeah. So. Yeah. My no, next video is gonna be Shade road Tree Exposed. <laughs> I love road glides, man. Everyone, just because I talk shit about one, everyone's like, "You hate road glides." I'm like, I talk sh- so like. I pointed out a bunch of stuff I didn't like about one. It, yeah. It, they Does that do, mean I hate it? <laughs> I mean, they do what they're designed to do. They're not perfect, though. So, so <clears throat> now that you got your bike with your 124 in it, <laughs> what's, uh, what's one piece of gear that you never go without? Your favorite piece of gear that you always have to have when you're riding? Who fucking came up with these questions? That'd be Roblox. <laughs> That'd be Roblox. Roblox did. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> you know, I didn't, Accurate, I didn't but... even wear a helmet until, like, I started doing YouTube videos. Was that because of all the hate or just because you needed a place for the camera? Because <laughs> I needed a place to put the camera. <laughs> <laughs> In my first YouTube video, my very first one, which is still up, I tried to use a suction cup mount because I thought I was just going to put it out in the tank and then, like, yell what I was going to talk <laughs> and, like, into the back of the building. Because <sighs> I just didn't wear a helmet. <laughs> yeah, you, it's like you just grow up you don't wear a helmet people are like how could you not wear a helmet i'm just like oh my god how you? you're 22 and you ride you learned how to ride a motorcycle from a fucking youtube video how do you mean what do you mean you how, how can you not wear a helmet <laughs> like, what the, i'm not trying to be ageist but i'm like dude like i fucking grew up riding motorcycles with fucking assholes and outlaws man like nobody wears a helmet Helmets are for fucking dipshits. You know, nobody wears a helmet. Like, of course you don't wear a helmet. You know? <laughs> and you don't wear gloves. You don't wear... He's fucking riding a wife beater and some fucking jeans, man. You know? And... <laughs> With flip-flops. With flip-flops. I've, actually flip-flops never, so I've never owned a helmet I like. I have hated every helmet I own. I'm just... Hate. And I've owned some really expensive helmets. <laughs> I've had a I've had a shoe berth. Um, right now Jeez. I have a shoey... Um, I had a Nolan. I've had, I've had all these, and I just hated every single one of them. They just suck. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I don't like wearing a helmet. Now I can't imagine riding without a helmet. But I'm just like they're noisy, or they break, or they rattle, or I'm just like, ugh, it's fucking garbage. But I've got very <laughs> shit like that. Also, use it every day. That's the other thing. Is like you yeah. use a helmet every day. Like you use a helmet once a week. That would be a nice helmet for a while. Like, I take my helmet on and off, like, fucking six times a day. Oh, yeah. That'll put some wear on it, yeah. Like, I don't know. What do you mean gear? And I wear mechanics gloves. Oh, man. The internet just hates you. (laughs) (laughs) Because you know why? Because I've had so many pairs of $100 gloves. I'm just like, I fucking hate these things. Yeah. Suck. Yep. So the last question so doesn't suck as bad. Nothing. nothing. Fuck you. I hate God. no gear. I hate it all. Change my mind. Gear company, send me some shit that I fucking like. Change my fucking mind. I don't think you can. That's what, <laughs> no one will send me shit. No one will be like, oh, let's send you. Try this out because I'm going to fucking hate it. <laughs> I already fucking hate it. I looked at the box and I knew I fucking hated you. <laughs> Oh, dude, immediately. So uh, I still wear it. Like, I wear my helmet. I wear my gloves. But I just fucking hate it. Jackets. Oh, God. I've hated every jacket I've ever owned. Oh, my God. You know what I wear? Some A jacket that... It's a Triumph jacket, like a Triumph branded jacket that somebody gave me for free. I like free. You know what? I, you, you know what I've, and I've worn that for, like, three years now? Four years? Hate it. Zippers are all broken on it. It's, like, it's too big. It's, like... It's just crappy. It's hot. But I just wear it because it's like the only jacket I have. Uh, and you know, I, before that, I wore a hoodie. 
<laughs> All right, let's see if this next question won't won't trigger him. Shit. <laughs> yeah, the, the the third question that suck as bad as the first two. So, Florida. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, dude. I'm just trying to make it funny. Just, <laughs> so Florida isn't known for having the best riding roads, but do you have a favorite riding spot, either local or otherwise? I don't, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, He's like the street between my house and the bar. That's my favorite yeah. riding spot. <laughs> uh, I. This I mean, can also like, be off. You can go riding. like find like the twisty roads if you want to. Like you can go out and be like, oh, I can't wait to go out and ride the twisties. Yeah, <laughs> just like lean into those corners. Like I'm just like, oh god, fucking <laughs> gag me with a spoon. Dude. <laughs> like I just like I don't know, man. Like I have fun wherever I ride. So so would you rather be street riding or doing your off road riding? I, oh no, off road is that's a whole different story. That's like there's just as many. That's my, that's my whole thing too. Is like so you can push it in the street. You push it in the street. Like someone's like, I can't wait to go hit these twisties. And like just so I I don't know, man. That I don't really like doing that. Like I'm gonna go fucking like tear it up on the streets. Like that's not really my thing, man. I'm not saying I don't fucking ride like an asshole sometimes. <laughs> I do. But as far as like going out with a specific purpose, like I'm going to go out to slay the street. Like that's just not, I don't know, that's not my thing. Um, but, but like I, I'm just as happy, dude. I'll rack up miles, man. I like fucking just riding, racking up miles. Fucking doesn't bother me at all, dude. Like going to a destination, even if it's all highway, just being like traveling somewhere is enjoyable. Um, just from the sheer act of traveling. Yeah. Um, when we were, when I did the 10 days in California, I rode to the top of like every mountain that I went by. And that was really nice, like going up all these cool roads. Um, but it wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to like get on these technical, like take this. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, can't wait to take this curve. Just perfect. Is that what you like about it? Not like, me. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Like when people are like, can't wait to hit the twisties. What do you, well, what is it? Do you just enjoy like, doing it perfectly or is it just the g-force that you enjoy like i'm not saying i don't enjoy it it's just not riding just, in a straight line yeah i mean i enjoy riding in a straight line too I'll, i mean riding motorcycles awesome like i i, I don't i don't know right. but when Fair it comes enough. to like sport riding like riding for sport and pushing myself that's off-road yeah see i come from i come from motocross background so when i go on the street I try to keep that push it mentality on the street because I like to see where the where the ceiling of my skill level is on a different medium, if that makes sense. So like I, I knew where it was on dirt. Now I want to try to find out where it is on the street. Yeah. Granted, you're, I mean, you're talking I, a lot more consequences on the street, but yeah, I would say the stakes are high, dude. Yeah, that's why I don't. That. That's why I don't have a sport bike. I started off on a sport bike on the street, and I was like, if I keep doing this, I'm gonna kill myself. So it's funner to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow, in yeah. my opinion, on the street. I mean, I, I don't know. No, it's true. I, I, I get it. Like, I get it pushing yourself and everything like that. But <laughs> yep, to each I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird question for oh me. My God, Shay Tree's gonna unsub now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't have anything against these me. fucking tools. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's just, I'm guys. trying to. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm not trying to stack myself up against somebody else. I'm trying to figure out like where I lie in that. Sure. You know. All right. So this is the final thoughts section of the uh, the interview here. This is where we give you an opportunity to plug whatever it is you'd like to plug. Oh, so this is going to be great. Yeah. So go ahead and do your shout outs or whatever you want to do. Oh, oh God. <laughs> where can they find you? Um, I have a YouTube channel. We talked about it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will put. You guys, we're here for that. If yeah. anybody skipped towards the end, my name's Shade Tree Surgeon. I have a YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a YouTuber. I do, I do things on motorcycles. Yeah. So we will put links to your YouTube channel in the show notes, uh, and they can find you on Instagram. You have a Patreon. Um, do you have a website? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you have a website for? You have to sell shit, right? 
Yeah, I've got one for my T-shirts, but like I don't, I don't, I don't have any made right now, so I don't want anybody to go there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't buy my shit. I don't, have, I don't have anything right now. I don't buy my shit. So, <laughs> all right, fair enough. I mean, like, but I, I always see people like go to my website. I'm like, fucking what for? So I can read your bio? Like, what the fuck is this a dating website? Well, well I don't get it. Like, <laughs> you're like, you gotta have a website. I'm like, for fucking what? <laughs> all right. I enjoy long rides on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, like somebody who knows more about social media and how the internet works, probably has a is like you have it for these reasons and blah 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 blah. But yep, like for me, it's kind of like I like when was the last time you're like I'm gonna go to this website and see what's happening? Where's the update section? Like no, it's like what <laughs> fucking year is it, dude? <laughs> like accurate. people don't do that anymore. I mean, like you go to your fucking Facebook or your Instagram or some shit like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a great transition into the outro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, so wonderful. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and do the outro now. God, I'm hating this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna. You were. I thought you were all like, "Is anything off limits?" I thought you were gonna hit me with some dingers, man. What's up? I thought you were gonna fucking hit me with the hard ones. No, Matt, that was, that's, that's roadblocks. <laughs> that's roadblocks decision, man. I'll say I never, I never asked that because I, I already knew the answer to that question. <laughs> uh, I try to be respectful to the guests so then we can get follow up interviews with you know other guests and they know we're not gonna. Wait, um, you, you don't respect. Respect is all about intent. <laughs> well, right. My intent is to have more people come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So gonna very similar. To, Who's going to be your next guest? Who's very next? similar to YouTube. You know, I mean, we like we have a, we like to have a following. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll share this. I'll talk about it in a video and be like, check this out. Just don't make a dedicated video for it, please. Like, just oh, sneak God. it into one of your other episodes because we found that if you do a dedicated video, it gets like seven views. So. Just yeah. a heads up. Oh, you're talking about like downloading it and like uploading it out as a video? Not only that, but like if you just made a video, like a three minute video talking about, hey, you should go check out this podcast, like it, it's not going to work. Yeah, that, <laughs> that episode will probably bomb for us. <laughs> yeah. so. No, no, I'll just like, I'll mention it in a video. I wasn't going to like. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want this to end up like Dan Dan. Or I'll also like, I'll share it on my like Facebook and Instagram and shit like that. You're not going to put it on your website? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I got to have like a bio section like that. <laughs> like updates for all those people who go to my website. And like, I wonder what's go I wonder what's going on with Shade Tree. I wonder what he's up to. Better check his website. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I feel like that statement comes with its own blockbuster three card. dedicated <laughs> social media platforms that specifically are about what I'm up to. And you're going to check my website? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Between Two Wheels podcast. Be sure to head over to www.betweentwheels.com <laughs> to check out the show notes for this and all of our episodes, links to our social media and YouTube, and the link to our Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate. On behalf of the Between Two Wheels crew, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you suck, then be someone better. Peace. <laughs>